Right, question nine. A third has parametric equations. David, good. X equals 1 over t minus 1, and y equals 2t plus 1 over t squared. Find dy by dx. Well, we know, we know that to find dy by dx, you differentiate both of these with respect to t. So if we differentiate that, dx by dt differentiate um, 1 over t. Well, don't fall into that trap of thinking this is something that it's not. That's t to the minus 1. So if we differentiate that, that's minus t to the minus 2. Or minus 1 over t squared. Um, dy by t. Well, that's, notice that is 2t plus t to the minus 2. So that's 2 minus 2t to the minus 3 once we differentiate it. So we've got 2 minus 2 over t cubed. So there's dy by dt and dx by dt. dy by dx is what we get if we divide them. So that's this one, 2 minus 2 over t cubed, divided by this one, minus 1 over t squared. It did say, and simplify your answer, so let's be sensible about doing this as easy as we can. We're dividing by a fraction, so that means we can multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction. Um, that's probably enough simplifying right there. I think I went a little bit further with this and said it would be, well, if we multiply this out, it's minus t squared times minus 2 over t cubed, so that's plus 2 over t, minus 2t squared. And I think that was how I left my absolute was. And that's quite neat. Certainly neat enough. Um, part 2, find the coordinates. There were quite a few people, by the way, who got really kind of tiny knots about this bit, about how we simplify this, and, and trying to keep things as simple as we can. We're dividing by a fraction, so let's multiply by its reciprocal. Part two, find the coordinates of the stationary point, and by considering the gradient of the curve on either side of this point, determine its nature. This was a really nasty second bit of this question, and we'll see why in a moment. So, um, stationary point is where dy by dx is 0. That means 2 over t minus 2t squared is 0. Multiply through by the t to get 2 minus 2t cubed is 0. So t cubed equals 1. So t equals 1. Notice that it's not plus or minus 1. That's, um, you always get every every time somebody's doing the key and putting heaps of lines. There we go. Um, so we've just got one value of t. The question, though, said find the coordinates. So that's not enough. We need to go back and find the x and y values. If t equals 1, x is... Well, x was... Oh, what was it? Uh, 1 over t minus 1. So that's 1 over 1 minus 1, which is 0. And y was... 2t plus 1 over t squared, so 2 plus 1 over 1, which is 3. So we've got 0, 3 as being our point. Okay. Now, by considering, by considering the gradient on either side of this point, determine its nature. Now, we're thinking either side. We know that we need to be close either side just in case something has a continuity involved in it. So if we're looking either side of these values of t equals 1, it's not enough. It's not, it's not any good to look at 0 and 2, or to look at minus 1 and, and 2, or something like that, because there could be a discontinuity in there that would, that would wreck how it's, what it's telling us about the gradient. We need to look very close either side. So trying values just less than 1, or just greater than 1, that kind of thing. So I, I actually said if t was um, just less than 1, and I wrote it as being 1 minus a little bit, so e.g. something like 0.9, how I think what would happen to that would be y by the x would be, if t was just less than 1, um, you would have, how was it? Um, 
you'd have something that was greater than zero, wouldn't you? Because if t was just less than one, um, we'd get something that is a little bit bigger than two, take away something that was a little bit smaller than two, so dy by dx would be greater than zero. If t was one plus a little bit, oh, let me just leave a little gap there. Um, for example, looking at 1.1, then dy by dx would be negative, because we would have um, an amount, if we just less, which way are we going now? Just bigger than one, then that would be less than two, um, and that would be greater than two by the time we've multiplied it through, so we'd have something that was negative. All right. Now, the danger here is we think we've gone from less than one to one to greater than one, and we've gone positive to zero to negative. So positive to zero to negative. So we're going to conclude it's a maximum. But it's not t that matters. The gradient is with respect to x. So what matters here is what's happened to the x values as we pass through these points. And actually, if we think about this, if t is just less than 1, x, I need to write down what it is, x is 1 over t minus 1, isn't it? If t is just less than 1, you get something that is bigger than 1, take away 1. So x is greater than 0. If t is bigger than 1, x is less than 0. So actually, as t has gone from just before the point to the point to just after the point, x is going the other, the other direction. So this point here, when x is about um, kind of minus 0.1-ish, t is greater than 1, and we've got a gradient that is negative. When x equals 0, we've got a gradient that is 0. When x is bigger than 0, we've got a gradient going up. It was wrong, this question, because of the way that it turned it, turned it round like that, and it was really easy to miss what was going on. The point was a minimum because of it doing that. But that was quite cruel, wasn't it? The way that, that although x, although t was increasing, x was decreasing. So actually, you need to look at it the other way around. Right. Finally, find a Cartesian equation of this curve. It's good enough quite a few. We've covered this very, very well. So when we get to part three of this, yeah. we've got this is over the next page, isn't it? We've got um, well, one of the t is x plus one if we rearrange it, which means that t is one over x plus one. All we need to do is to sub that into y, so we get y is it was y is one uh, two over t. No, what was it? Y is 2t plus 1 over t squared. So 2 times t plus 1 over t squared. 1 over 1 over x plus 1 squared. So our answer should have been 2 over x plus 1 plus x plus 1 squared for two yeah. marks. Yeah. Quite a lot of people miss this reciprocal bit here. And I had 2 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x plus 1 squared. <laughs> You've just ignored it. Right. And that's maths. <laughs> <laughs>